pray that the Holy Spirit will give this message today. Please join me. Spirit of Holiness, we do pray that you will be with each and every individual here, that uh, you'll bring insight, a, a new thought, something that, that hasn't been considered previously. And we'll just ask that you'll be with us and that you'll edify, build up the people, and that we will have reason for more confidence in what you do and how you do it. And we'll pray in thanksgiving that you will uh, that you'll do these things with us and for us and at this time in Yeshua's name. Amen. So uh, today uh, I'd like to focus on a, uh, an event that happened. It's a true event. Uh, and, uh, you know, we try to bring things out from both the Old Testament and New Testament. Uh, they both sound the same because they are the same. Written by the same spirit written by the same God, written by uh, and for uh, and through the prophets. It's all the same thing. It's just quite amazing that for thousands of years, people have considered these things somewhat separate. It's amazing. Uh, you know, it's like, it's like the tone is the same thing. It's the same good feeling. You know, if you read it long enough, it don't matter what kind of funk you're in, that good feeling will come through. But I want us to turn today uh, to begin with uh, something from the New Covenant, uh, Acts chapter 16. So the literal translation of the book of Acts is the doings of the sent ones. Okay. Maasei shlichim, the doings of the sent ones. So we begin uh, on, uh, at verse 20 of chapter uh, 16, and the uh, the prologue to it was there was a woman following uh, following uh, Paul around and saying, "Oh yes, I'm, I'm prophesying, and uh, this uh, he is he, this Paul. We should pay attention to." Him. But there was something off about this woman uh, that seemed to have a religiosity, or there was something that put him off that it just didn't seem right. So he uh, he 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 said, "You have." A, a, a spirit that's off. Maybe it was a religious spirit. Uh, but he, he delivered the woman, and that made some people very angry because this particular woman was able to foretell things, and, uh, and when she no longer was going to be able to do so, I guess her owners were very upset because they no longer had the means of making a lot of money. So they made trouble for, uh, for Paul, and we, that begins on verse 20. And they brought him to the magistrates, these angry businessmen, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, uh, being Romans. And uh, the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent their clothes and commanded to beat them. Uh, you're, you're just going against custom. Things have been this way, and now you're talking about something new, and it's very upsetting. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, uh, and uh, charging the jailer to keep them safely. So they, they whipped them, put them in jail. Uh, verse 24, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. So they can't move. Their feet are in the stocks, uh, and uh, they're, they're immobilized. Uh, I also, it would seem in the inner prison, that would be very dark. It doesn't sound like the inner prison has any windows in it at all. Of course, there was no uh, electricity. It sounds like it was very, very dark in there, and probably very dank. I don't know uh, how good the sanitation was either. I mean, it doesn't say so, but when it says the inner prison, I, I don't know that they cleaned it regularly. Uh, and, uh, you know, my guess is they had bugs. And who knows, maybe they had mice and rats, I don't know. But it, it doesn't sound like a very good environment. Uh, they didn't, they didn't uh, have uh, much consideration for the prisoners. In verse 26 it says, 
So they're in prison, they're in the stocks. Verse 26 says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. I, so all the doors were open. I suppose there were other prisoners that just said, hey, out of here. Uh, everyone's bands were loose. It sounds like more than just Paul and Silas. It says everyone's bands. So probably there were other prisoners and those prisoners took the occasion to uh, go off from freedom. But what a miracle. Wow, the earthquake came at just the right time. Verse 27, And the keeper of the prison, awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. Uh-oh. The earthquake came. The doors opened. I was asleep. I should have been on my game. I should have been on my duty. And now it's for negligence. They, it, uh, you know, it's going to go badly with me. Maybe, maybe the best thing would be for me to kill myself and avoid the unpleasantries that are going to happen because I did not perform my duty uh, as a Roman um, per, uh, soldier or keeper of the prison. Verse 28, but Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do, don't do yourself any harm, no suicide here, for we're all here, okay? In other words, uh, we haven't all left, uh, and uh, take it easy. Uh, let's, not jump, let's, let's not jump to conclusions. Then he called for a light uh, and, and sprang in. So apparently there was no light, all right? Sheer darkness, uh, and, and, and came a, a, so he comes in with a torch, he comes in for a light, and uh, sprang in. Uh, trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out saying, Sir, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they spoke unto him the word of the Lord and to uh, all that were in this house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and his straightway. And when he had brought them to his house, he said, Meet before them, and rejoiced before them in all his house. And when it was day, the magistrates sent the servants, saying, Let those men go. And the keeper of the prison told this, saying to Paul, The magistrates have sent for you to go now. Now therefore go in peace. Hmm. How'd this happen? I mean, uh, there's an earthquake, and the earthquake could go anywhere. You know, if we had an earthquake here in Palm Springs, you know, that might be in, that might be in Cathedral City, uh, but not in Palm Desert. And then if it was in uh, Palm Springs, okay, it might be on the next street or three miles over, okay. But it happened to be at the place where Paul and Silas, I mean, that's very specific uh, locator for this uh, for this earthquake to come at the right place and at the right time. It didn't happen to come three weeks earlier, three months earlier. It came at that time. It was the time when Paul and Silas are singing praises to the Lord at night. They don't got nothing to do and nobody to do it with. And their lot seems bad. They've just been whipped and, uh, and, and it's dark and dank and it's lousy. And it doesn't look like there's going to be any lawyer to help them out of this situation. They're in a fix. So what do they do? They begin to sing. They begin to praise the Lord. They begin to, instead of focusing on how bad things are and getting worse, they begin to sing out in praises to God for all of his blessings. I mean, they're going right into the teeth of the discouragement. So... Uh, Wow, what a thing to think of at the last that you really feel like singing to the Lord. I mean, the normal thing would be to say, oh, God, why did you do this to me? I don't deserve a whipping, and it's so dark in here, and, you know, will you deliver and, and, and get me out of here? I, this is unjust, and, uh, you know, will you do something to the unjust people who have done this to me? 
Uh, after all, aren't I loyal to you? So what we, what we would do is, is we would complain to God. That's what we would do. We would complain to God and say, hey, how about it? I've been loyal with you. How about you come and help me? I thought that's what you were about. I thought, I thought that's what being God was all about, was you were going to help me. After all, I, Paul could say, I'm all out there for you, Lord. Now, how about, how about delivering? See, that would be our normal human tendency. Huh? Buy me, get me, bring me. Okay? But instead, they do the opposite they sing to the Lord, they're praising the Lord, nobody can see them, and nobody can really hear them. It's not going to do them any good on the outside. You, if you're outside the jail, you can't, you can't hear any of this stuff. Well, that, that's, that's quite an interesting thing that they did there. Uh, what's the results? Well, it says... Uh, uh, they're, the magistrates are told, uh, told the sergeants, uh, let these keeper of the prison, verse 36, told this saying to Paul, the magistrates have sent to let you go. Now, therefore, depart, uh, go in peace. But Paul, he gets it. He sees further into the situation than what somebody would normally see. This is a, kind of a revelation, if you will. It's not the normal thing. If it's us, we're out of there. Hey, thank you, Lord, I'm out. I'm free, and thank you very much. You know, I'll tune in tomorrow, and, but for now, let me out of here before they change their minds. But Paul said to them, uh, they have beaten us openly and uh, condemned us. Uh, being Romans, they cast us into prison, and now they thrust us out privately. Oh, you made a big public to-do about arresting us, that we are troublemakers in the city, that we're teaching things that are not customary and uh, traditional. And, and now, now that you've slandered us publicly, defamed us publicly, humiliated us publicly, all that stuff that you did publicly, now you want to kind of quietly say, <laughs> well, if you just leave quietly. And Paul says, oh, no, nothing doing. No, that, that, that really won't do at all. You see, I if I can uh, extrapolate a little bit about what, Paul, what was going on in Paul's mind. Oh, yeah. You see, I get it. I, I get it that what this is all about has to do, the reason why the earthquake came was to glorify God. That's what it was all about. Okay? That's why there was the miracle. And we're going we're gonna to take this opportunity to glorify God. Because that's why God did it, was to, was, was to bring glory on himself. And uh, so he says, I'm not leaving. We're not leaving. And the sergeants told these words to the magistrates, and they feared when they heard that they were Romans. Uh-oh, you're not supposed to strike a Roman, and we whipped them. That means we're vulnerable, and they, we can be condemned. And we'll be the ones in jail if anybody finds out that we actually uh, hit and, and whipped a Roman citizen, and they came and besought them and brought them out and desired them to depart out of the city. Uh, so there it was. Paul said, no, if you're going to, if you're going to discharge us, we want a, a public discharge. We want all of the community to know, okay, that the earthquake happened and that, uh, that we are leaving, but not because we are fleeing. We have confidence God would take care of us, as he just did. You see, you see, he wanted word to be spread throughout the entire community that they had received a miracle. They took the situation and, and decided to, to uh, portray it truthfully as something that was done in order to bring glory to God. Oh, wow, that's something. Could it be that there was a connection between the praising of the Lord and the release from prison? Hmm. Well, let me see. Uh, let's, uh, let's talk about the uh, spiritual world as though we knew a lot about it. <laughs> okay. But uh, let's call it... Let's call it more than speculative thought. 
we know certain things, that there, is, uh, that there are a vast number of spirits out there. There's the positive spirits and the negative spirits. And they're whispering to us all the time. Okay? So, when there is a maliciousness, and so on, that's a negative spirit. When there is a feel sorry for myself spirit, oh, pity me, poor, is, woe is me, uh, uh, why did you do, and a complaining spirit, those are all negative. Those are all negative. Why has this happened? I don't know. I'm kind of angry with you, God. Now, what about it? You're kind of a cheat because I'm, I'm, on the, I'm altogether for you, and where are you when I need you, et cetera. See, that's a kind of a sublimated anger towards God. So it's anger or complaining, uh, et, cetera, et cetera. Those are all negative spirits, and they're out there. There's a lot of them, all kinds of negative emotions, negative feelings, and, and, and we have and, and they're and they're on they're on our case they're on this one they're on that one they're on every one of us to try to get us to bring us down that's the, misery loves company they're going down and they want to bring us down all the time that they can that's that's what they want that's what they relish is I oh the joy the wonderful thing that I can I can torment this person those are negative spirits. And the more that we indulge those spirits, okay, the more they hang around. This is really great fun. Look at what I can do to this poor slob who's feeling sorry for himself and complaining to God and angry with God, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, my, this is, this is what I came for. I'm going to hang around here because I can have my fun over here. I'm going to work on this guy. I'm driving him down, down, down. And what do we stupid people do? Why we a little while longer, huh? Because it feels good. Yes, I, I'm, I'm making my case, and, and it seems right to us to do that. Why? Because the negative spirits are influencing us to think that way, to get into that mode, huh? So what does Paul, what do Paul and Silas do? They go right into the teeth of it. They say. Wait a minute. If, I'm extrapolating a little bit here, but to me it makes sense. If my problem is the negative spirits that are afflicting me and causing these men to want to put me away and to put me in stocks and to whip me and to make my life miserable, that's, if those are the spirits that are causing these people to oppress me, it's those negative spirits that I have to come against. And how can I do it? I can't just grab them out there. I can't see them. But I know how to get at them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to chase them away. How can I chase them away? I'm going to do something that they hate. I'm going to do something that they can't stand. I'm going to do the thing that will that they got to get out of my company, not to, not to continue to hang around me. I want to be like poison to them, that they will flee from me. They won't want to be anywhere around me because I'm going to be praising the Lord. I'm going to, and my praising the Lord is going to remind them of where they're going. Now, what happened was they just, I, I mean, I don't think that they just sang to the Lord for half an hour or an hour or two hours. I think they sang all night. And you know what? They didn't have rehearsed songs. They didn't have sheet music. They made up the songs that they went along. And whether they rhymed or not, they just Sang praises to the Lord. Huh? Have you ever done that? Where you just compliment the Lord and praise the Lord and, 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 and pick up your own melody as you go along? Hmm. Well, that's, that's, that's what they did. You know, no musicians. No musicians. Just kind of harmony between the two guys. You know, Paul and Silas in sync. Huh? And they're, and, and, and they're trying to sound good to one another. Right? Of course, the whole jail's hearing this. Okay? It must have been a surprise to the other prisoners. What the heck is this about? Well, you know, after hour after hour after hour after hour, this is, this is, this is making the, the negative spirits uncomfortable. They have to stop this. This must stop. Because it seems as though they're just going to keep going and keep going and keep going. There is no end to this. And, I, and, they, and the negative spirits can't stand it. I think that's what caused the earthquake. 
to get this thing to stop. We got to shut them up. Huh? And so that's, that's my understanding of what took place. And I think there are many people here who would agree with that understanding that it was the praising of the Lord that actually sprung them loose. So praising the Lord, singing to the Lord, complimenting the Lord, okay, glorifying the Lord, not only makes us feel good, but actually has an impact on circumstances. Actually has an impact on circumstances. Now, uh, Elizabeth was showing me that every morning what she does in terms of her reading of the scriptures and talking to the negative spirits to chase them away, I feel like over a period of time she wore them down. I feel it had, it had something to do with her healing. So these are just not exercises to make us feel good. It's not about that. It's the praising of the Lord that defeats the negative spirits. That's what, that's what it's about. And defeating the negative spirits, now we're actually into real warfare. The real warfare that's taking place is out there in the spiritual world, the reflection of which is in the material world. If somehow there was peace out there in the spiritual world, if, then you'd have peace on earth. The two things go hand in glove, the things we can't see and the things that we can see. But the root of the problem, we, we look at, 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 at that which we can't see and we say, well, that's the root of the problem, that's the root. No, the root of the problem is out there in the places we can't see with the forces we can't see. But because we are readers of the Bible, we have insight as to how things work. We don't know totally, but we understand some of it. That's, that's what's going on. That, so here's an example of where, of where singing and praising the Lord act has impact on circumstances. Amen. Now, we're fond of quoting both the Old Testament and New to show that things are not really different. Okay. Uh, so uh, we have Second Chronicles 20... 22, and it says, it says, Josaphat, Moab is the tribe that's uh, in, in uh, northern Jordan today, uh, far, far north Jordan. Um, it says, uh, and when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, set ambushes against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, up near Syria, where they uh, came against Judah, and they were smitten. So here we have an example, Old Testament. Jehoshaphat is trying to cope with these invaders from these uh, outsiders from Moab and uh, Ammon, uh, which is today present Jordan, these invaders. But how does he go about doing it? Huh? He didn't, there was not a draft. No. He went right for, right into the teeth of it. And he says they began to sing and to praise and set ambushments. So it was, uh, there was some reason why Jehoshaphat made a connection between the singing and praising of the Lord in order to get the desired results. Jehoshaphat could see it and acted upon it. Paul and Silas could see it and acted upon it. And there are other examples in the scriptures as well. We're getting a peek at God's modus operandi. Okay, This is where the real warfare takes place, and this is the real way to get at the heart and soul of the difficulties. Singing and praising, complimenting the Lord, bringing glory to the Lord, etc., etc., defeats the enemy that is out there, the tormentors in the, spirit, in the, in the spiritual world. Hmm. Okay, we got a couple of examples here. Well, let me see, as a practical matter, how does this work? Um, 
Well, in Hebrews 13, 15, we learn a little more about how this is done. Uh, it says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God, the fruit of our thanks to his name. So here we are back in the New Covenant again, and it tells us something about this process of offering the sacrifice of praise. And it says continually, the sacrifice of praise. Why is it called a sacrifice of praise? Because we don't feel like doing it. I mean, I mean, when you're in a funk, the last thing you, that we feel like we want to do is to praise the Lord. Oh, come on. I'd rather, I'd rather think, it. maybe if I think about it enough, I can figure a way out of my difficulties, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, and by, by, by the way, what? what why, 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 can't, why can't there be a solution for me? And maybe if I think about it some more, maybe if I call so-and-so, et cetera, and, and maybe, hey, you know what? I know what I'll do. I think I'm going to have some, I, I haven't had a drink in a long time. That's going to solve my problem. And you see, the last solution that we want to think about is that. Why? Because the controlling negative spirits, huh? Because that's the last thing they want. That's why those thoughts don't come into our mind. Because we're in those, we're in those, neg we're into the negativity because those spirits are controlling what, and, and put us in the negativity. And the negativity, the negative spirits, the last thing that they want, they don't want to hear praising the Lord because that's a reminder of their future. It's scary, it makes them feel insecure. They don't like it, it's unpleasant. So that's why we don't feel like doing it. Because we don't feel like doing it, it's called a sacrifice of praise. At the moment when we are at our worst, when all seems bad, when all seems lousy, when there is no solution, when, it's bad, when it seems to be getting worse, huh, the thing to do is, is to somehow or other, somehow or other, some Paul and Silas, or Jehoshaphat, or other examples. If I will praise the Lord, I can affect my circumstance. God, does not God did not invent the whole process of praising the Lord, okay, as just a, an exercise of making ourselves feel good. It was the means of warfare. Not by might, not by power, not by, but by my spirit. Okay, so when it all bad and getting worse. The thing to do is to say, I don't feel like it. I don't want to. It's, it's, I don't see what good it's going to do. It's, you know, and besides, I'm here all by myself. And I, I can't see any connection between my praising the Lord and getting some sort of alternative uh, expectation about my future. I can't see the connection. But I'm going to do it anyhow. I'm going to eat my spinach. And I am going to praise the Lord. And it's at that time that it seems very, very difficult and futile and, and clumsy and embarrassing. And we just don't feel like doing it. And it just seems like a waste of time and energy. And we actually feel foolish about it because we don't want to do it. And we don't see how it's going to do us any good. But I'm going to do it anyhow. Why? Well, it worked for these guys. Maybe it'll work for me. What have I got to lose? So therefore, I'm going to start. What do I have to praise the Lord about? Well, I'm not blind. I'm mostly not deaf. I'm not lame. Matter of fact, a lot of people are worse off than me. And God, you did keep me around and you, you have protected me. And we can all, no matter what it is that's going on, even if we are blind, deaf, or lame, we can all think of things to thank God for. Huh? And, those, and that's the thing to do, is to verbalize that. And it's a very interesting thing in that on the negative side, have you ever noticed that the more that we indulge in how delicious it is to think about how lousy it is, and I'm just going to think about this a while longer, and, we just, and, and, and I'm walking in that direction because the next thought will come to me. 
about Woj. And so on. And I am, I am, I'm all the time thinking, giving new thoughts. Why am I having new thoughts? Because the negative are giving me new negative thoughts. And they will continue to give me new negative thoughts so long as I am willing to receive them. I have to field every thought. Field it. That's the shortstop. A ground ball to the shortstop. He picks it up. He throws he throws it to first base, and the batter's out. But well, it's up to us to field that thought. Huh? Now, having fielded the negative thoughts to say, wait a minute, I'm in a slide. I'm in a slide. i got to stop my slide. i got to get rid of these negative guys that are tormenting me. And I'll do it. I don't feel like it, but I'm going to do it anyhow. So we begin to thank for what he has done, what he's going to do, to praise him, and there's an innumerable and infinite number of things to praise him for. You see stars in the heaven, God created every one of them. They're all working in perfect mathematical precision. There's so many things to praise the Lord for, etc., that we don't that we just take for granted. Just the right amount of oxygen, the right amount of water, keeping the planet going. There's an infinite, infinite number. So we they call it the sacrifice of praise because it because we don't feel like doing it. Psalm 100, uh, verse 4 says, enter, his gates, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Okay, I've got to get in touch with God. I've got to get in touch. I need help. Here's how we get it. We've, it's, like, it's like entering into the temple. Okay, first we have to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. That's the first step. You want to get in touch with God? We've got to get God employed on our side. It says the first thing we've got to do is we've got to get in the gate. How do we get in the gate? We begin to thank God. That's how we gain entrance to begin with. But just because we've gotten through the gate doesn't mean that we're there. And then we have to go into his courts with praise. Huh? So first we're in, we thank God, and after we thank God for this and for that and for this and for that, then... It, it will feel more like praising the Lord because, hey, you know, there are a lot of things i got to be thankful about. Okay? And, and, and then it says to bless his name, to give him credit, to give him credit for all of the good things. But that's where it starts. If I go to the Lord with a complaining spirit, I get nothing. But I've prayed. i prayed. i prayed for a half an hour. i prayed for 45 minutes. Buy me, get me, bring me. I want to get this. i got to have that. Oh, surely you'll give me this. And by the way, if you'll just move this person to, to move on my behalf so I can get that promotion. And that's our prayers are all the things that God should do for us. Huh? How does that match up with enter his gates with thanksgiving? The way, the way that, we, that we get in contact is we start with thanksgiving. Huh? Then, then we'll feel more like praising the Lord. That's where it starts. And we begin to chase away the invisible enemy. Now we go a little deeper in this. Okay. Ah, stay with me. All right. In 1 Corinthians 14, 15, it says, what is it then? I will pray with the Spirit I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit. I will sing with the understanding also. What does this mean? It's in the Bible. I'm not making this up. I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with the understanding. Okay? Yeah, now. Now. All right. Now, there, there is such a thing as singing in the Spirit. Okay. Now, there's, a, there's, for the people who are on the charismatic side of things, the people, the, there, there, is, there is the thing of, of speaking in tongues. Anybody who wants to speak in tongues, come talk to me, and I'll get you, and, and, and we'll, we'll together, we'll get over that hump. Okay. If you want to. If you don't want to, it's okay. It, it doesn't say that you're a, a lesser believer, but it is something to do, and there are benefits to it. If we want. It's authorized for every believer, but it's a matter of appropriating it. So there is a thing of getting started with that. It's very awkward, etc. 
But what people find is that it's easier to get that started, to get used to it, if we will sing it instead of, instead of saying the syllables that don't seem to make any sense to us, to sing them, okay? And by singing them, we're making up our own melody. So that's singing in the spirit. That's what it says, singing in the spirit is. But suppose, suppose a person's makeup and faith, it, it, they just don't have faith for, the, for, the, for, for this uh, speaking in tongues. What, is, what does the scripture have to do with them? It still works, okay? If you're in the spirit, if you're in the Holy Spirit, okay, and you're singing, all right? So what that can be is, is whether, it's speak, whether you're doing it with tongues or you're doing it in English, okay, it's still a matter of singing, singing out loud your praises to the Lord. See, we're used to talking to God, but we don't have to, we can, we can sing to the Lord without the musicians up front. What about on Tuesday and Thursday? We can do, we can do that also. Okay. Stay with me here. <laughs> you may think I'm getting a little flaky, but that's all right. Listen, you know something? When you live long enough, older people feel like we have something to share that's valuable. Okay. And you know some people who are believers for a long time, we feel like we have something to share out of our experience where we have benefited, and we want to say, listen, will you listen to me a little bit? Huh? I have some, I have some good, I have some, I've learned some things, and I, I really, with all my heart, want to pass along my experience uh, on Saturday mornings. I mean, that, 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 okay, so how do we do this, okay? Maybe a little live demonstration would be handy. I can sing to the Lord in tongues, but I know not everybody would welcome that. That's okay. I can sing to the Lord in English. I can sing in the Spirit to the Lord in English, Okay. Oh, Lord, thou art, thou art wonderful. Thou hast created me and hast protected me over all of the years. Oh, Messiah, thank you for coming and suffering for me. You made it possible that I would be born again. And thank you, Lord, that I am a new creature. I, I, am, I, am, he, I am he who is made a part of a peculiar people. And we do praise you, Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. Oh, how glad I am that you are that you are he who has delivered me from all of my difficulties and vices. Oh, Lord, how I do praise you and glorify you. You are, you are master of my fate, and so on. And maybe I didn't carry such a good melody, okay? But I make up the melody as I'm going along. And you get the idea? You get the idea that I'm making up a song. I'm making up a melody. I'm making up the lyrics and the next lyrics are coming to me. Like in prayer, the next phrase, the next sentence will come to you. And, 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 and if it's not coming so fast, so you hold on to those notes a little longer. But the, it will come. It will come. And, it's, and music does something. Music, praising the Lord, is, is taking our whole yearning, the yearning of our heart, and putting it out there on a silver platter. Okay, and we are saying, I don't care who's listening. I'm putting it on the line. I don't care. I'm going to be a spectacle. I'm going to be a spectacle. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. So, in Psalm 98, it says, Sing unto the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. His right hand, his holy arm, hath gotten him victory. Sing unto the Lord a new song. I just, I just gave the beginnings of, of a new song. This afternoon and tomorrow, it'll be a, a newer song. But I'm making up the words. I'm making up the lyrics. I'm making up the melody. And, I, and, all of, and it's all pointed towards one thing, the glorification of God. So that's what it's about, to sing in the Spirit. It is a remedy. It is a remedy for the things that don't seem to have any remedy. It's the thing to go to when we don't feel like we want to. That's the time that's especially important to do it. That's, that's what's going on. So, 
Now, there's such a thing as panting in the Lord. All right? So, a lot of times, what happens is, who's ever heard of chanting in the Lord? Huh? Huh? Some people have, have heard of chanting in the Lord and may have done chanting in the Lord. What that is, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a, a quiet version of singing to the Lord. It's kind of a muttering. Okay? So it's kind of like, it's out loud, but it's, it's, it's pretty much just you're hearing it, and you don't really care if somebody else hears it. But it's not shouting it out to the rafters. And you can have a group of people doing it, okay, 10, 20, 40, 200, etc. And people are seeking, seeking to have it all kind of blend together. Just like Paul and Silas, they were trying to reconcile that they should that they should be in, in harmony with one another. So, so this is, so singing to the Lord, chanting of the Lord. You know, why is this effective? Why is this effective? Well, it has to do, it has to do with glorifying God. Why did he spring them loose? Because it was going to be, it was going to glorify him. You see, there's a lot more to this glorifying God business than just a catchphrase. There's, it's part of the most, most operandi of what's actually going on. You see, God created heaven and earth. I mean, there's, he created the angels. He created every spirit. He's the father of all spirits. He created all, all matter, all atoms. He created everything. And it all is out there, and it all testifies of his greatness, of his ingenuity, his inventiveness, his beauty, his, and his wisdom. It all speaks of that. And all of nature knows to glorify God over that. I mean, a fish says, wow, I can actually breathe underwater. Wow. Only the human being, only the human being is confused about the glory of God and who's the maker. How do we get so confused? It was the snake in the Garden of Eden, and the snake says, oh no, you don't have to do that. You should be glorifying yourself. Let me tell you how to do that. He's just lying to you. He's just lying to you. Don't you believe him? Don't you realize that you can create glory for yourself? And so that's what we do. That's our sorrowful state, is seeking glory for ourselves. How much money I can make? Can I get a promotion? Am I seen as an important person? Am I given respect? All of these things, they're all about glorifying me. All about glorifying me. How large is my congregation? How long? Everything seems to be so much about glorifying ourselves, the me. Huh? And what that is, it's a, it's a reflection of the first crime, which was to listen to the snake, and go in competition with God. So all of the things that we spend almost all of our time doing all have to do with self-glorification. And it's defeating because we are setting ourselves up in competition with God. And he won't have it. There can't be any reward in seeking our glory. It's when we seek his glory and when we tell of his glory, and when we praise the Lord and compliment him, and we, and, and, and we, and we say, ooh, ah, how wonderful you are, huh? and we say why, huh? then we're bringing glory to him. And if we'll go out there and actually make a spectacle of ourselves and gamble more on it, 